Nigeria's fuel scarcity is refusing to go away, defying promises and projections from the authorities. And with black market sellers making a killing, what hope is there of the situation being resolved? And also on the breakfast, ahead of the 2023 general elections in Nigeria, the Independent National Electoral Commission is saying no new political party will be registered ahead of the polls. This is the end of any plan of the third force as a political party. Plus, we have analysis of the headlines in today's national dailies, these and more ahead on The Breakfast. A very good morning to you. Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And what is a beautiful Tuesday morning. I'm Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi It's Good to be back on your screen at the very first day in the month of March. It's okay to say Happy New Month. You know what? I, I, didn't, I didn't even remember today. It was first March. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> you know, I know it's first March, but I didn't remember. It. <laughs> not that's thinking okay. about it. That's, mm. that's how, maybe it's about February, you know, not running the full course of 30 or 31 days. I hope your birthday wasn't on 20. Ah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> some people say today, a day like this is a day to still wish your friends who were born on 29th February a happy birthday, even nah. though it's not a leap year. Nah, it's not. It's not. There's no not 29 and there's not 29. Today is first. Yeah, well, um, or yesterday, probably. Could have been a day to, to wish your friends was born on the 29th of February. <laughs> usually, know, I mean, if you I want guess. to wrap your head around that conversation, yeah. it's usually very Amen. strange. It's strange. And uh, very, very sad. Mm -hmm. Well, but, but I think it's okay. You know, you save some money. You don't celebrate your birthday. You do that only once every four years. So <laughs> anyway, um, there's a lot to look at today. Um, the few cues are still there. Uh, the black market sellers, as we call them, are making a killing. Um, and they are making good money. Um, we'll look at that as we go on. Also, of course, um, uh, we have the elections coming up. Mercy. Yes, indeed, we have the elections coming up. And uh, um, <laughs> there's a lot to talk about, especially as INEC has released um, the timetable and published officially the, uh, the, um, uh, the notice of election as required by law. But let's start with our top trending stories. Um, uh, the Ukrainian invasion by Russia is still on. Some people call it an invasion. Some people call it um, uh, Russia versus Ukraine. Some call it attack on Ukraine. But whatever you want to call it, uh, Russian troops are in Ukraine, and uh, it's um, a worrying development for humanity, a worrying development for mankind. Uh, Mercy, y yesterday, as we, we, we know, the United Nations um, General Assembly had a, a long session talking about the Russia-Ukraine crisis. And of course, the, um, uh, the nation of Russia is still a part of the UN. They've not been uh, being removed from it. They can't be re removed at this point. Um, Ukraine is also a member of the UN. So they had, uh, not the General Assembly, I apologize. I apologize, not the General Assembly. Uh, but, but they had a, a meeting and where the ambassadors of the countries, each country has an ambassador to the UN, had to speak. Uh, the Russian ambassador spoke after the Ukrainian ambassador had spoken, and he, he had to play or put up, um, it was really dramatic, he had to put up uh, a, uh, a, a text message or so obtained from the phone of a young Russian soldier who was captured and killed by Ukrainian forces. And what the text message, message showed was that he was upset. He was scared. He was confused. Um, the, the young Russian soldier sent a message to his mother saying that they were told that they were going to be welcomed as heroes in Ukraine. You know, the Russians manage information and they have a very strong propaganda uh, um, uh, system. So he said to his mother, we were told we're going to be welcomed as heroes in, in Ukraine. Uh, we were told that we we're fighting for the Ukrainians to, to free them from Nazis. But we came here and the people were throwing stones at us. They were lying down. They were trying to stop our tanks and they were lying down on the ground um, trying to stop us. That we've had to use our tanks to ride over our Ukrainian citizens, you know, lying down on the ground. And to, to, to also ride over using their tanks to crush Ukrainian cars. There's a video going on on the internet um, where you see a Russian tank crushing. It's driving over a Ukrainian uh, a, a, a car. Um, so, so that was what transpired at the United Nations, a long session. And the Russian ambassador to the United Nations responded by saying, hey, um, 
You know, Ukrainians are responsible for this. He went over to talk about the Minsk uh, protocol, an agreement that was signed between the Russians and uh, the Ukrainians. And this has to do with um, not, uh, uh, you know, uh, embarking on any uh, aggression towards parts of Russia or parts of Ukraine that uh, um, want to secede. Those Russian-speaking parts like Donbass and co. And not, not embarking on any actions, you know, against Russia. And uh, so they accuse the Ukrainians of being the, the reason for this particular crisis or this fight. Um, and that uh, the Ukrainians were the one that, the ones that uh, provoked Russia to, to the war. Uh, but the Ukrainians are saying, see, we never had any reason to, to, to attack Russia. We never had any plans. We never had any reason or any intention to enter Donbass, you know, where you have um, uh, Donetsk and then Luhansk. You know. so, so, so it was spinning back and forth. But the, the pictures, the reports, and the videos emanating from a neighboring country where um, the, Pol the, the Russians and Ukrainians met, met for, uh, for, for a meeting and for, for talks. Um, so and things flying around. Well, um, it's also reported yesterday that uh, Russia and Ukraine actually had uh, started the peace talk, and we're hoping that it, it makes a lot of sense. The peace talk, in essence, is that both parties would come together and call for a ceasefire. And usually at this point in time, there's also another report saying that you have uh, Belarus also you know, trying to invade, and that's according to uh, a U.S. official. Some people say, whose report do you believe? Because at the time when the United States said you were going to have Russia invade Ukraine, nobody took that to heart, and eventually that happened. And now you're also having another you know, talk saying uh, you probably might have Belarus uh, invading Ukraine. Now, people have constantly said, I mean, you remember having this conversation on this platform, we talked about the fact that what we're going to be seeing would be alliance. Uh, you will now have alliance being formed, and so different countries would just be, you know, uh, supporting and taking, uh, you know, standing behind each of this country. For instance, Ukraine. So you probably begin to find out that uh, you might just be having allies of uh, Ukraine and Russia coming together. And so different countries will continue to tilt towards each other. But um, it's okay that the peace talk is going. I really don't know if that's actually ended. Uh, and we're hoping that that makes a lot of sense. You know, usually when you have uh, that particular peace talk, we're hoping that both parties would have actually reduced, you know, whatever it is that they were doing. For instance, the attack would probably reduce on different facilities and all of that. Uh, we're looking forward to having, you know, a peaceful world. Yes, yes, indeed, yes, indeed. Um, uh, the United Nations is 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 uh, the, the the place where these issues should be should be discussed. And usually, if any war is meant to take place in this country, the Security Council in this world, sorry, uh, the Security Council, the UN Security Council needs to needs to pass a resolution. Uh, you usually would see that if the Americans and the, the West, NATO and the Allies want to go and uh, embark on any war, the Russians and the uh, uh, Chinese may most likely veto it and vice versa. You know, um, so the Russians didn't go to the Security Council to say this is a situation we want to go into and then give them an opportunity to solve it. They went in on their own. But the Americans and NATO have done that in the past as well. You know, in, 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 the Yugos in, in Yugoslavia, the former Yugoslavia, they were able to... In former Yugoslavia, they were able to, um, uh, they embarked on a war because of what was going on in, in Kosovo without a UN resolution. But um, uh, the latest from as far as the Nigerians in, in, in Ukraine are concerned, you know, we've been talking about this for some time and a lot of people are interested in that. So let's give them some snippets of what the Minister of Foreign Affairs said yesterday on national TV at night at about uh, 7 p.m. Um, he said that... Um, uh, the evacuation of Nigerians is on. Uh, evacuation of or the plans are already in motion. Uh, evacuation flights from Nigeria are expected to commence uh, from Ukraine's uh, neighboring countries this week via airpiece and Max Air. You can see that's the latest uh, daily update from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and signed by the Permanent Secretary. So they have now. Um, been releasing daily updates, and I think that's very commendable. This one signed and properly written, not like the other one that had a lot of grammatical errors. It's properly written, signed by the permanent secretary and the minister of foreign affairs. So he says, fly air peace and max air uh, will be lifting Nigerians anytime this week. Um, uh, he also said that about 
5,600 Nigerian students in Ukraine, uh, a total of 8,000 Nigerians in all in Ukraine, very close to what our guest yesterday said. He also said currently 1,000 Nigerians who have crossed, um, 1,000 Nigerians who have crossed into Romania or have crossed into Romania from Ukraine, they will be airlifted in the coming days. Also, Nigerians are crossing successfully into Poland and Hungary. About 150 of them are in Somi in Ukraine, which is closer to Russia. So they will be expected to go to Russia. Um, so they have these arrangements with Max Air and Airpeace um, to fly these Nigerians home in the coming days. But um, he also said that not all Nigerians may want to come back home. Some may want to stay there. So only those who want to leave uh, will be evacuated. And he also clarified the issues with uh, why the federal government had not flown into R Ukraine to to pick. <laughs> you know, some Nigerians have been, I mean, been saying, no, pe no, people Could have be... been saying this. So he had no, to clarify. No. You, you uh, know, and he, all... he, he reiterated that the airspace of Ukraine is currently close to commercial flights. Um, so the evacuations have to happen in neighboring countries. I really, I really don't understand. I mean, when, when I actually <laughs> saw that uh, message, yeah. you know, from the Nigerian government, what it was, I mean, the Nigerian embassy, the letter that was actually put out, it was actually in public space and domain. Mm. What I expected was there's going to be a disclaimer that it was fake. Oh, that first of one. The content. Yeah, mm. because of the content mm. on how it was put out. Okay. The truth is, when I juxtaposed that with that of India, the embassy, uh, you mm. could see that this country understood what was going on. Mm. It's a conflict zone. The airspace will be short. Mm. So Ukrainian airspace has been short, and there's nothing you can do. It's so dangerous. You can't even very, try to very. begin to say, oh, we're Nigerians, and then we're coming there to have, what are you saying? That would take down anything in that space, mm. anything to see. It's so it's not even a time for you to begin to say, oh, we're trying to, we can't come there. We already know what it is. And so there's no need for you to begin to state the obvious. Um, and the big question here has been, have we been proactive? Do we always wait for things to happen? As much as people would say, oh, it's not entirely on the Nigerian government, you know, to evacuate citizens. Uh, that's because you have people who are, who are responsible parents, guardians, who are responsible for their ward, I mean, students in, in Ukraine. Right? But we need to you know, move away from that and get back to Nigeria. And let's look at the issue of uh, students protesting. I mean, talking about ASU strike. Nigerian students yesterday took to uh, protest and they have vowed that the protest will continue until ASU actually ends uh, that strike. And usually the spot of the protest is usually uh, the Unity, Unity Fountain. Fountain. Yeah. <laughs> That's in the AF city. So yes, like we mentioned, uh, Nigerian students are saying, no, we will continue with the protest until ASU ends the strike. And they have talked about the impact. They cannot continue to be away. And all of the strike constantly affects them. Uh, you know, state universities and federal universities, the fact that they have to stay home. It's no longer news. But one of the things that worries me or that concerns me that this did not, as much as, yes, we're talking about it, as much as we think that it also made part of the conversation, um, you know, yesterday and up until this moment, but it really didn't get that kind of recognition that one would think. It's not That's a joke. As we're saying, they're going to be on strike for one month. It's, it's not even a time. The fact that we have distorted calendar, uh, you know, academic calendar, it's, it's not something to celebrate. It's really, really, you know, um, if we're a country that pay, we pay attention to mental health, it does a lot of harm to the people. And imagine, uh, you know, what will actually happen at this period or, you know, that students have to be your home. So I really don't know, but I know that ASU would be on the other side saying, oh, the students should probably be on our side, understanding the plight and understanding the fact that we're fighting for, uh, you know, the cost mm. of the Nigerian student. But yeah. really, is ASU really fighting for the cost of the Nigerian student? Uh, do you also have the government paying attention to the interest of the Nigerian student? I mean, there were several tweets yesterday. I saw some people saying, it has to end now. We say, you don't, the youths are the leaders of tomorrow, but you don't pay attention to education. Education is very key. It's important. Right, uh, but you, you, there's always this saying, and even some, you know, the Bible. And for those who actually would believe in the Bible, you have some parts that your money would actually go where your heart is. So wherever you see your money going to, that's where your heart is. How much do we pay? How much attention do we pay to the educational sector? Why do we constantly even have to bother about our student in Ukraine? You know, so you constantly have, you know, the figures on the high. People are leaving, students are leaving, whether or not they want to study, everybody's just trying to find a way out. You see, no, high time we pay attention. Is this rocket science? Is this mission impossible? What exactly is the problem that we, 
giant of Africa cannot fix. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's a very interesting question. What's the problem that the giant of Africa cannot, cannot fix? Uh, um, um, like you said, that, that protest was, um, uh, they, they gathered at a unity fountain, but they walked through some streets in, in, in Abuja. Um, we told that they caught, you can look at it, you can see the pictures there. They caused um, some discomfort to some motorists. You know, they caused some uh, hardship to some motorists. Um, you know, when they, they walked on the streets. Um, but I, I'm looking at the, the students there, and I'm wondering um, whether this, this, this protest is, um, is, is going to affect anything, because, <laughs> you know, it's just a, a, few, a few students. You look at the number of students you have in Nigeria, it's just a few students. These are not Nigerian students. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's a disgrace. They should go home. So you say this, why do you say this is a non-Nigerian student? They, they, sh they should go home. The, the nuns, uh, you know, they should go home. Because um, over the years, um, you know, student unionism has died in Nigeria. If we're talking about the student union government, we're talking about the National Association of Nigerian Students, it's died. It's, it's, it's dead. It's dead. You know, you and I were, went to the same uni. <laughs> I don't know I should tell the listeners. Um, what did you see? I mean... Which, which, when has the, the student union bodies, be it the National Association of Nigerian Students or the state unions or the, the SUG in schools, when have they come out to consciously, or co to, to talk about conscious issues, to protest conscious issues, to be a force for, for change and for good in the university first? I'm not talking about breaking glasses and all that or protesting when there's no water alone, but, but serious issues. These guys have become. I mean, when does the water? That's guys, a serious issue. I'm, I'm, uh, so, do this guy, this guy's what message is serious, excuse me, if not the students who are facing this issue. These guys have become stooges in the hands of their vice chancellors. You know, that's for the student union government um, mm. leaders. They are stooges in the hands of their vice chancellors. Um, and they also get a lot of pay, you know. Then the National Association of Nigerian Students' leaderships have also become stooges in the hands of politicians. That's why, pay, pay, pay time, you have two factions. And then they disgrace themselves by coming out to support maybe one party or the other. So you have two factions, or maybe National Union, or National Youth Council of Nigeria, or maybe NANS. One will say, oh, we, we support the federal government on this, they're doing well. And I will say, oh, we're against, the they're both for different political parties. So, I mean, look at the, if Nigerian students want to protest, are these the number of people that will come out? Look at that. No, no, no. So, no, so, no. so you know, if we look at the number, um, if there's actually a video, unfortunately, we're unable to put that. Now, right now, I am not about whether if the If Nigerian number... students want to protest, so, this nation will not move. So, so I'm about the fact that, okay. you know, so first of all, just I'm, right, I'm right, about right. the fact that, first of all, uh, just before we move on, I'm about the fact that, first of all, um, I really don't want to pay attention to the numbers of students that we have. And let's not forget that this protest is happening in the FCT. We cannot take out the fact that, yes, you have, um, you know, the NANS or the Nigerian student, the SUG, and the government in schools being taken over, uh, you know, by politicians, governors, and whatever to project their own own interest. But my concern here is that there's a strike that's going on. As you say, they're going to be on strike. And you have some sector people who have come out to say the strike has to be end permanently. And whether or not these persons, you know, the number is up to a million, the most important thing is that people are asking that the, the strike should actually end. And I do not think that this is actually in favor of, because if you look at it, they're saying that as we need to get back to school, the lecturers need to get back to class. And that's the most important thing. We can't continue like this and expect that we, we want a different climb where we we keep our children out of school for a very long time and then we hope that we have a climb where you know there's peace there's no crime yes, and, yes, and there's yes. no criminality yes. in all of that so mm. yes for me it probably might not be about the people who are actually you know coming out right now we, but we, the most we, important we have, we have thing is the fact on. that people are asking that the strike has to end but but, and but, we need but to I have attention one last question it. one last question you know no, we need to move. Um, when you want to you want to strike and you see you ground you want the government to notice you you have to make the government notice you. And if the government doesn't notice you, it's just a protest. You do it and you go How, away. So you expect, it, it only you be reported, the 36? It be reported do you expect on the, the 36? On the national dailies mm. that they went on strike, and that's the end. Nothing. Oh, Asu is they're just they're saying that they can go ahead uh, with their protest. And do you think protest. that Asu would continue Asu, 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 Asu is saying that they can go ahead, two, but nothing small. Maybe in two weeks. No, the they're, they're saying the that the students have a right, but that they won't go, they will not go back to school, the classroom. You understand? So what are you protesting for? You know, and if you protest, they must feel it. Otherwise, it's 
it's Kofi, a waste of time. You and I know that very soon after yeah, we, we follow have the to, strike. We have to move But that's on. the much that we can take we at this point on. in time. We'll definitely return with uh, uh, top trending conversations surrounding uh, you know, our space right here. That would be tomorrow. In the meantime, we'll step on the brakes when we return. It'll be time for us to look at uh, the front pages of our national dailies. Please stay with us.